Welcome back. This is my bandsaw that I restored recently and it works really well but there is one big problem and that is all the dust that it produces. This bandsaw is so old that it has no dust collection with it. You can see here that the machine and the floor are totally covered in dust. Let's take a look on the inside. Yep. Same story in there as well, full of dust and the wheel is pretty much covered in dust. And that can lead to a bigger problem. This tyre has dust that's been compressed onto it by the blade and the blade can also get bits of dust compressed onto it and that causes trouble with the blade running on the tyre and also where the blade runs through the bearings and guides. When sawing the timber the blade pulls the dust down basically from where the wood is cut all the way down and a lot of it goes inside this hole here and on the outside of the machine. Now some machines have ports in the side of the cover here or maybe below and those are connected to dust extractors to attempt to extract the dust. Now that's something I can't do here because I've got big gaping holes in here and there are also big holes at the bottom as well. So this bandsaw was not designed to have dust extraction through the cover of the blade guard. I have watched a few videos on YouTube and the most efficient dust extraction is directly underneath the table and around the blade. And they typically have some type of tube that comes around where you can connect your dust extractor onto. Now this bandsaw is quite old and I've only got about 24 millimeters maybe 15 16th of an inch to play around with up here so that might be a little bit of a challenge i found a piece of pipe that will probably work well i'll need to squash it in a little bit here so it can fit in properly it's just trying to get the angle here and it keep moving i cut off a bit of the pipe it may be cut a little bit shorter later on. Then I squash the end up so it has clearance to fit under the table. And although this is quite thick wall pipe, it was quite easy to squash up in the vise. Now I'm cutting the angle that I drew on the pipe. I also need to cut a slot in here for the blade to go through. I tested it and it was a little bit short so I needed to cut it a little bit deeper. Now I test the pipe in there. That looks good and I need to make a plate that goes in between now. This is 75mm by 5mm flat bar. Again I need to cut a slot in here for the blade to fit through. The plate will go in there like that and then the pipe will come up and sit onto the plate and then I can weld it around the edge there. Now that plate obviously needs a hole in it for the year to go through and I'm using the traditional way of cutting an old ball shape by drilling lots of holes. Then we tappy tap tap that out. And I come back and smooth up the edges with a burr. I have already tacked these two parts together while they're in place and now I come back and do some more solid welding. I'll clean the welds off. And you'll notice here I haven't welded the end. That's where the air will be sucked in. I do a little bit more finishing with the burr. Then I turn my mind to how this is going to be mounted. On the underside of the table there's this big chunky piece of the casting. 
So I'm going to mount a bracket on here. I drill this out to 6.5 millimeters and I go down about 20 millimeters deep. Then I come back and tap that out to M8. I'm going to use this 5mm thick bar for mounting. Here I mark out where I need to drill the hole for the bolt. Once the hole is drilled, I bolt that bar on and I line that up onto the pipe and then I'll be able to weld it in this area. While it is sitting in place, I put a couple of tacks in there. To give that bar a bit of support, I'm putting a little brace in here. That is all welded properly, and this is just bolted on with that one bolt, and it is pretty secure. That said, I want to add a bit more support, and I'll use a bit of square bar smaller than this. We welded at the top. There'll be a right angle here, and that right angle will then be fixed to the housing of the bandsaw. This is 10 millimeter square bar. I could have used my bender, but it was a lot quicker just to use a bit of pipe to bend the 90 degrees. So that's going to go there like that. And I need to chop a piece off. That right angle bar needs to be stepped out about 10 millimeters, so I'm making a little mounting plate for it. I drill a hole in that mounting plate for the M8 bolt that will go through it. I cut the little plate off to the right width. The right angle bar and the plate are clamped together and welded. I've clamped that right angle bar onto the housing of the bandsaw and I'm just marking out where I need to drill the hole. The hole is drilled and then I tap out the hole to M8. The last step is to tack that right angle bar at the top where it goes onto the plate and then I take it out and weld it properly off camera. This is how the attachment goes on to the machine. There's a bolt at the front, bolt under the table. Those are tightened up and it is pretty solid. And here is a view from the top of the table where the blade comes through the attachment. Finally, the parts all cleaned down. I undercoat it and also put on this top coat. The attachment is complete, and yes, it was made with some pretty heavy material, but I was just using the material that I had on hand. Now on some YouTube videos, I see people making these out of attachments used for shock vacs and things like that, the ones made out of plastic. But I didn't have one of those, and it might have been a bit hard to install because I was quite restricted on room under the table there. So the two questions are, does it work? And if it does work, how much better is it than the original without the dust extractor attachment? While using Logic, any dust extraction will be better than nothing, so there will be some sort of improvement. And the question is, how much improvement will there be? And that is what I'm going to test next. This is the setup for the test. I'm actually going to run two tests though, one without the dust extractor attachment and one with it connected to the machine. I've cleaned the machine down on the outside and the inside to remove all of the dust. I've cleaned the floor so basically there's no dust anywhere. And I do that same process at the beginning of the second test as well. For each test I have two pieces of wood, one of them you can see on the bandsaw now. And I'll be cutting this crossways like it is now, and also some long grain cuts from the end. In total, both tests will have 50 cuts each, and the cuts will be the same in each test. 
Here we go. I start off with some long grain cuts and these are going in seven inches. I do five cuts this way and then I cut those off doing a cross grain cut. I do this twice for each of the tests and then the remaining parts of the test are cutting off slices from the end like this. These are all the pieces that result from the 50 cuts. So a quick look at the table here. Yeah, a little bit messed up. A lot of bark on the right hand side. And the floor, there's quite a lot of dust down there and on the machine. Here's another angle. Quite a big pile of dust on the floor there. Let's take a look on the inside. As expected, it's all piled up in there as well and in the door. And the problem with that is this dust will get onto the tyre and it will get trapped between the blade and the tyre and cause problems. I've swept the inside and outside of the machine down and swept up the floor as well and I've collected all of the dust from the test and put it into these two pots. Now we set up for the second test and I put on the a dust extractor attachment. I have also emptied out the dust extractor container. I connect up the dust extractor hose and proceed with the next test. So this time I'm cutting the piece off and then I cut these strips off or these five cuts long ways, seven inches long. I do this because the first test the wood tried to pinch together and was causing problems. So that's done twice and the remaining of the test I cut these ends off until I've made 50 cuts. Quick look at the table, still a lot of bark and stuff on there. And down on the floor it's totally different down here. There is dust there but there is not a lot. A different angle, little bit of dust on the table, bit on the machine, but not as much as before. So I'm quite hopeful. Take the side off to have a quick look. There is some dust in there, but there's not a lot of dust. Again, the inside and outside of the machine were swept down and the floor was swept up. And this is all of the dust I got from the second test. Then I empty the dust collection bin onto the floor and that dust is put into containers as well. I'll get all this together and then I'll summarise the results. This is the dust from the two tests. The amount of dust was pretty much the same for each test. So on the left here we have the dust from the first test. This has been taken from the outside and inside of the machine and from the floor. This first container has the dust from the second test, from the inside, outside of the machine and off the floor as well. And these two containers have the dust that came out of the collection bin. The results here look really good, but how much of the dust did the dust extractor attachment actually collect? The dust that was not collected from the second test is about 27 millimeters high, but you can see this container has some voids in it, so it's not as much as the same height of dust higher up in these containers. I've copied that line over to the container for the first test, 27 millimeters high, and this black line at the top is the top of the dust in the second container. So the difference there is 310 millimetres. There is a total of 337 millimetres in the left and in the right hand container there is 27 millimetres. So the dust that was collected with this attachment was over 92%. And I've got to say I'm pretty happy with that. In addition there is a lot of bark in this container as well. So this has come off the wood and ended up on the table and on the floor 
and the pieces are quite big so they're not going to get pulled down with the blade to be able to get taken away by the dust extractor. So there is a percentage that would never get pulled away by the dust extractor and a lot of that is in this container. So with my amateur testing I'm confident that the dust extractor attachment will take away over 92% of the dust. I hope the testing was useful and you've learned something from it. I do recommend installing dust extraction right under the table where the blade comes through and encapsulating the blade. You also need to make sure there's enough airflow going through to pull the dust off the blade. Well that's about it for this video. I hope everyone has a great day and once again thanks for watching.